Hi there, this is Unmesh and today I'm going to share with you how to use dodging and burning to retouch skin in Photoshop. This is one of the most commercially used techniques used only by high-end professionals. And there's a reason for it. First of all, it takes a lot of time. Secondly, it takes a lot of practice. However, the kind of results it creates is absolutely worth it. Because when we are dodging and burning, we are simply brightening and darkening and doing nothing else. And therefore, the skin texture does not get affected at all. However, since this is all manual and it's just like painting, we might need a little bit of practice. But once you get a hang of it, it can get a little addictive because it's such an amazing technique. I hope you enjoy this. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. So have a look at this. The first thing we need to do is to remove the blemishes no matter what skin retouching technique you're using. Even if you're using frequency separation, it will really help if you remove the blemishes and the wrinkles in the beginning because then you won't have to deal with them later. So let's say you're using frequency separation. You won't have to remove the blemishes both in the texture layer and the color layer. Or let's say you're using dodging and burning. You don't have to extensively paint over that blemish and maybe correct the color later, it can get a little too complex. So it becomes very easy if you remove these blemishes, these lines and wrinkles in the beginning. And my favorite way of doing that is by using the regular healing brush tool. There are lots of ways of doing it, useful in different scenarios. You can watch this complete guide on removing blemishes if you like. So let's begin by creating a brand new layer by clicking on the new layer button right there. Once we have done that, select the regular healing brush tool, not the spot. The spot makes it a little soft. The regular, the second one. Select that and all we have to do is this. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample from a nearby area and then paint over that blemish. If it's not doing it the right way, just make sure that your sample is current and below and the blend mode is normal. Also, if you want to see the blemishes more clearly, there's a check layer that you can create at the top. So for that, you can click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose black and white right there. And all you got to do here, now this can be a little straining to the eyes, just decrease the reds. Have a look. All of those blemishes and those irregularities show up. Now, you can also increase the yellows to make it a little more easier for you to see. Just play with the slider. Stop at the point where it looks okay. And then let's get back to layer one. We can actually name it blemishes. Double click on the text to name it. Blemishes, fine. Let's just zoom in and remove them one by one. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample, remove. Now, we don't want to sample the black and whites. So always make sure that the sample is current and below, not all layers. That way it will also sample the black and white at the top. A good way is to only remove the blemishes that is distracting to you if you want to keep things natural. And for that, I would highly suggest to keep your image at 100%. So if you press Control or Command minus, see at the top, it shows 100% right there. Keep it at 100% zoom. It'll help you see the blemishes which are distracting and then begin removing them. Sometimes what happens when we are totally zoomed in, we tend to overdo things. We want to avoid that. You can also do it without the check layer in case you only want to remove the ones which are distracting. So I've given you both the options. It's your choice, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to make the process a little faster so that you don't have to sit through it all. Now keep in mind we don't have to remove all the blemishes because that way it won't look realistic then. Have a look at the cheek. These blemishes make her look natural. Have a look at the nose. A little bit of freckles here and there. It makes her look natural. Only the distracting ones are the ones that we need to take it away. Now that we have removed the blemishes, it's time for us to start with dodging and burning. But before we do anything like that, let's do some preparation for dodging and burning. And what I mean by preparation is we need to create some additional check layers just to make sure that the dodging and burning goes smoothly and accurately. The first one, of course, is taking the colors away. We don't want to be distracted by colors. And the way to do that naturally is clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choosing solid color. Now you can choose any color, black, white, gray, anything that has zero saturation, right? I'm going to choose gray or black. Anything doesn't really matter. Hit OK. Change the blend mode of this layer from normal to color. That takes away all the colors. Now this is absolutely different from just decreasing the saturation all the way to the left. If you are more interested in how is it different, please check out 
this video. The second thing we need to do is to create a curves adjustment layer to make the unevenness of the skin even more pronounced. So first of all, we're going to click on that hand right there and any dark area of the skin, we're going to click and drag it down just like that. And then work the curves to make sure they are well pronounced. All right. At this moment, I can clearly see what is dark and what is bright. That really helps you with your dodging and burning process. Okay, you can always come back to it and change it for different areas specifically. So once we have done these two, the third thing we need to do, and this is the most crucial, sometimes when we are zoomed in too much in dodging and burning, we get too much concentrated into every single pixel and we do it kind of too much. Especially when we are a beginner in dodging and burning, we get too caught up painting over these single pixels that we spend hours and hours, sometimes six to seven hours, and then we zoom out and see that something is wrong with it or the skin looks absolutely smooth. So to avoid that, we need to add some blur to it. By adding the blur, we won't get caught up by those singular pixely textures. All right. And the way to do that is by simply creating a merged layer at the top of blemishes. And for that, momentarily, let's turn off these check layers. All right. And now let's select the blemish layer and press Control, Alt, Shift and E on Windows. Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. This creates a merged layer of everything that you see on the canvas at the top. Stamp visible layer. We can just name this Reference Blur. Before we add blur to it, we want the ability to be able to change the value of blur later. And that is why let's convert this into a smart object. Go to Filter and then Convert for Smart Filters. Hit OK. Now let's add some blur to it. Go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. Blur of two is fine. All those pixely details are gone before, after. Now we can easily dodge and burn. And once we are done, we can actually turn off or delete this reference blur layer. To start with dodging and burning, first of all, let's create dodge and burn layers. And for that, we're going to use our curves adjustment layers. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And click on the middle and take it up just a little. This is for dodging. And let's name this layer dodge. Now select the mask and press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Now the mask is completely black, which means the effect is showing up nowhere. Wherever we paint white, the effect will show up. Let's create a copy of this one, this curves adjustment layer, and let's name this burn. This is for darkening. And this time, double click on the symbol to open up the properties. Just take it down. So we have the dodging and burning layers set up. Let's turn on these check layers. We can actually make a group of both of them. Let's turn them on and select the first one. Hold the control or command. Select the second one. Control or command G. And we can name this D and B check layer. All right. And we can always switch it on or off to check our image. We have the reference ready right there. And let's start with dodging. Click on the mask of the dodge layer. Take the brush. And this is very crucial. Select the soft round brush right here. Now, decrease the flow to 1% or 2%. If you're a complete beginner, let's start with 1%. If you're a little bit experienced or you think you can handle it, set it to 2. All right. It's just the intensity of the brush. Now, zoom into 100%. It's very important. 100% or less. You can, of course, go ahead and zoom in a little 200 or 300% and then do it. But you don't want to lose the originality, the complete structure of the image, right? To have the structure in mind, it's important that we only dodge and burn when zoomed out. You can zoom in and do some little correction. That's okay. But it's important that we are zoomed out at least 100% or less. So let's zoom out at 100%. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white, and then just start painting on an area which you think is darker than the surroundings is distracting and making the skin uneven. As I can see, this area is a little too dark. This area as well. There's a patch of dark in there. This area, there's a lot of patches. So we're going to just paint over them. Just like that. See how easy that was? Let's have a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. You see the difference just in a couple of seconds. Before, after, before, after. And that's what we have to do throughout the entire image. Now, there's going to be places where you want to darken stuff. And for that, you might have to go to the burn mask 
and then simply paint with white. So let's say we want to darken this area, just paint with white. Make sure you're zoomed out to 100%. Now let's have a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. See that bright patch is now gone, before, after, before, after. That's how we're gonna do it. Now I'm gonna make the process a little faster just with dodging so that you get an idea of what I'm doing. This is gonna take a little time. Whenever you need to check the image without the blur, all you gotta do is to turn off reference blur. Whenever you need to check without the check layer, just turn it off. Let's have a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here is the after. Let's turn on both of them. The reference blur and dodging and burning check layer. Anytime you feel like you have painted a little extra, for example, let's say I've painted a little extra over there, you can go back by pressing Control Z or Command Z. If you're using CC 2018 and below, you would have to hold Control Alt Z, Command Option Z, just to go back. Or if you think you have partly painted too much, you can always erase this by changing the foreground color to black. Press X to toggle the foreground and the background color, and then you can paint black back in that area to subtly erase it. So those are the things we can do. Let's resume dodging. Now, as you can see, there are some bright patches on the forehead. Time for us to do a little bit of burning. So let's move to the mask of the burning layer right there. And then let's start darkening these areas. Our goal here is to just even out the skin tone. To check the overall before and after, you can also make a group of the dodging and burning layer. Select the dodge layer, hold the control or command, select the burn layer, and then press control or command G. And we can name this dodging and burning. All right, let's have a look at the complete before and after. Let's open up the group. Here's the before, here's the after. Just look at the forehead. Isn't that such a drastic difference? And so natural. If I turn off the dodging and burning check layer and the reference blur, have a look at the forehead. Here's the before. Here's the after, look at it. All the skin texture is still intact and every unevenness is gone. There's a lot to do, so let's resume working on it. Now here's something we need to do. Have a look at these areas. There are some blemishes that we want to keep. So for this area, I want to keep the blur a little higher so that I don't get confused by these blemishes. All right, so for that, we're gonna go down to reference blur and just simply increase the value of Gaussian blur by double clicking on it. And then let's choose something like five. Let's go for a nine. That looks nice right here. Don't focus on the forehead. I know it looks strange at the moment, but let's get back dodging and just brighten up these areas. And then we're gonna change it back to two again, once we fix this. Now, let's decrease the blur and fix this in detail. Set it to two. Let's get back to dodging and let's fix this. Let's increase the radius of the Gaussian blur back to two so that we can work on the details. Let's get back to dodge. For this, we need to zoom in just a little bit. Let's make sure that the opacity is at 100. Now have a look at the area under the nose. To be able to dodge and burn over there, we need to see the details. But because of the curves that we had added for the check layer, we cannot see it so clearly. So we need to modify that curves, just that. Let's open up the dodging and burning check layer and let's open up the properties of the curves by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer. And let's make the darks a little brighter to be able to see the details. All right, this looks fine. 
Now let's get back to dodging and let's work on this area. Now when I look at it, if I zoom out a little bit, there is a little bit of darkness right over here that we need to work on. Let's first work on that. All right, now let's get to the nose. Zoom in 100%, that's fine. Now let's work over here. Now let's make the curves dark back again inside of the dodging and burning check layer so that we can see more details. All right, now let's get back to dodging and burning. Now one of the things we need to keep in mind when doing any kind of skin retouching is that we should never remove the smile lines. They should always be there. In order to retouch skin, we should not take away the expression. A beautiful expression is way more important than beautiful skin. Let me give you one more tip. When you're dodging and burning and you're having difficulties painting in a certain angle, you can hold the R key. This opens up the rotate tool momentarily. As long as you're holding the R key, then you can rotate it. And then when you release the R key, it gets you back to the brush. If it doesn't get you back to the brush, you can always press the B key, which stands for the brush tool, and then paint. And when you want to reset it, just simply hold the R key again and click on Reset view. As you can see, we have finished with dodging and burning. I want you to have a look at the before and after. But first, let us turn off these check layers and the reference blur. So turn off the dodging and burning check layer and let's turn off the reference blur layer at the top, right there. And have a look, just brightening and darkening using two layers of curves. That's it. And masking. Look how much we have accomplished. Here's the before. Here is the after. Isn't that a massive difference? Let me just zoom out and have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. The brightness has been matched with that of the face, which is excellent. Now, before we proceed to the next step, it is very essential to look at the image with a different angle. And I mean that literally. Have a look. So let's turn on the dodging and burning check layer and also turn on the reference blur. Hold the R key. This shows up the rotate tool. Rotate it upside down. If you're so used to looking at a face up straight, that we might ignore the unevenness or the irregularities. This technique really helps us find out the things that we might have missed. Now, if you zoom in, have a look at this. This area is a little dark. We didn't catch that before. Now, zoom out and have a look at some other areas. All other areas look fine, but I think that this particular area has a little more darkness than it should. So, let's zoom in and fix that. Open up the dodging and burning layer. We just need to dodge it. Select the dodge layer, take the brush, Flow to everything is as it was. Now let's add some brightness to it. As simple as that. So you can also read about this in many uh, art books. I think I was reading a book about Leonardo da Vinci and the book taught me this technique actually. He was obviously talking about paintings and stuff, but you can apply this to retouching as well. All right. That looks pretty okay. Let's have a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. We fix that maybe a little bit more. Right there. All right, let's zoom out and have a look. Any other areas that we need to fix? Right here, I think there's a little more darkness. We can easily fix that. Not a big issue, but anyway, let's fix it. There we are. Okay, 
All right, let's zoom out and have a look. This looks pretty fine. Now, this can get pretty too much sometimes. Sometimes you get caught up and every time you look at the image, you see something you need to fix, like I'm seeing right now. If you take a break and come back to the image, you'll see all of the things that you have missed. In this area, I see a little bit too much brightness. So let's zoom in, go to the burn layer, burning means darkening, and then let's paint that area. Make sure you're zoomed out about 50, maybe 100% is good. And just burn that area. Let's have a look before, after. We fill that area up and it looks fine now. All right, maybe this area as well. Oh, we need to dodge that. Let's go back. Let's go to the dodge layer and let's dodge it. All right, that looks nice now. Zoom out and have a look. All right, now that looks like wonderful skin. To reset the angle, all you have to do is to hold the R key again or go to the rotate tool and then click on reset view and you are good to go. All right, now let's turn off the dodging and burning check layer and also you can delete the reference blur. I'm just gonna keep it and turn it off. All right, that's fine. Let's close the dodging and burning layer. So here's the before, here is the after. Look at the difference. Now the next step can be fixing the color because when we dodge and burn, there might be a little unbalance of color. Now. Some of you might think, and this works sometimes, that if you change the blend mode of these curves adjustment layer to luminosity, it won't affect the color. But to me, it doesn't work very well. It kind of desaturates the color, it seems. So I'm gonna try it for you. So if I simply change the blend mode of the dodge layer, have a look at the difference, to luminosity, you know, it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Look at these areas. It just looks strange, so I avoid doing it. I always prefer fixing the color later and keeping the curves adjustment layer at normal. That way, it just looks normal, all right? So I'm gonna keep both of them at normal and then fix the color later. But before fixing the color, we're gonna fix the lips because there's a lot of cracks and I couldn't fix it with dodging and burning. So let's create a brand new layer and we can name that lips. And we're gonna use the good old healing brush too, the regular one. All right, and let's zoom in, hold the alter option, click to take a sample and paint over. Now, if you want to see the preview in the brush, go to window, go to clone source and just check show overlay. That way you will see the overlay of the sample that you took. So for example, if I take a sample from right here, it'll show the overlay of what it's gonna paint with. We need to make sure that we don't overdo it. So let's zoom out a bit. Zoom in. We don't have to remove all the lines, but the ones which do not look healthy. These lines are common. Let's have a look. All right. Zoom out, see how that looks. Here's the before, here's the after. Is there any other line that isn't looking great? Have a look at this, this irregularity out of the blue. Let's take it away. Now have a look, the lips look much cleaner. So here's the before, here's the after. So much more better, isn't it? Now we can go ahead and remove all these lines all right there we go let's have a look at the before and after of just the lips so here is the before here is the after fixed if you want more naturality in here you can always decrease the opacity and slowly and gradually increase it but to me 100 percent opacity is fine now i see a pattern right there whenever you're cloning or healing you might come across patterns and we need to take it away because it'll give the viewer a definite sign that this was retouched or cloned. So remove the line over there. We don't wanna keep patterns. Okay, now when I look at it, there is a line which you can only see if you zoom out pretty well. So let's zoom in and let's see if we can fix that line. All right. That looks wonderful. Now it's time for us to fix the color. Now to clear the confusion for you, I will delete the reference blur layer because we're gonna add some more enhancements to it and the dodging and burning and the blemish removal check layers, remove all of that. All we have done up until now is first of all, we have removed the blemishes, then did dodging and burning and corrected 
the lips. That's it. Now let's correct the color. You won't believe it, but the color correction technique of the skin is super obvious. All we have to do is to tell Photoshop to change just the color. Have a look at this. If we simply create a new layer and let's name this color fix. All right. And now change the blend mode from normal to color. That's it. Now color the area in the color it should be. So you got to take the brush and then make sure in the eyedropper tool, right? The sample size is 11 by 11 or 5 by 5, not point sample, because we don't want to take a sample of a single pixel. That pixel might be a noise. That pixel might be a super dark area. We want to take an average. If you choose 5 by 5 or 11 by 11, it's going to take an average of 11 by 11 pixels and then allow you to paint with that color. It will just sample that color. All right, so take 5 by 5 or 11 by 11. I'm going to choose 11 by 11 for this one. Take the brush. And now all you got to do is have a look. This area, the color just doesn't look right. So I'm going to take a sample from this area and paint over that area. As easy as that. Now, you cannot see anything. Why? Because the flow is very low. Remember, we decrease the flow too much. So increase the flow back to 100. Take a sample and paint. See, we fixed that. Have a look at this. So here's the before. Too much color in that area. Here is the after. We fixed it. Now if you want, you can decrease the flow to about 20% to keep things under control and not painting too much. So for the other side, take the sample and start painting slowly and gradually. All right, we fixed that as well. Before, after. I want you to especially look at the areas that you had dodged and burned too much. Those areas will have a little bit of unbalance of color. Have a look at this area. This area we had, I think, dodged or burned too much. So there is an irregularity of color. So I'm going to take a sample from here, try to paint there, see if it fixes that. Yes, it does. Fixed it. No problem. Similarly right here. See how easily we are fixing the color? Just take a sample of the right color and paint over the wrong color. That's it. As you can see, there's a sudden red over there. So I'm going to take a sample from here, paint over that, fixed, easy. Check for irregularities in other areas. Every other area looks fine to me. If you spot any other area, you can paint over there. All right, we have fixed the color. Now this might be a very minute change, but have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Just look at the these areas where we fixed it, before, after. Look at this red area where we fixed it. Before, after, before, after. Very minute correction, but very effective. Here as well, you we can just take a sample and paint over the bright spots if you want color in those areas. Be a little careful as you paint. You can also uh, decrease the flow to about 5% so that we don't paint so much. Okay, now let's come here. All right, let's zoom out and have a look. Here's the before, here's the after, before, after painting. Now, after we have fixed the color, the possibilities are limitless. You can retouch the eyes, you can retouch the hair, maybe retouch the lips. There are so many things you can do, like color grading or maybe select and mask and put it on a different background. And all of that you can watch in these videos. There are tons of things we can do. There are some other videos linked in the description as well. But that's how you can retouch skin just by using dodging and burning. Of course, you need to remove the blemishes first or easier workflow. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Before we end, let's do a quick little recap. First of all, create a brand new layer right there and you can name that blemishes and in that layer, we just have to remove the blemishes and the wrinkles and all of those things which will be difficult to remove while dodging and burning. Once you have removed those, for this I actually used the regular healing brush tool. You can use whatever is your favorite, the patch tool, the spot healing brush tool, the regular healing brush tool. There are lots of ways of doing it. After you have removed the blemishes, we have to create two layers. One for dodging and the other one for burning. For the dodge, all you have to do is to create a curves adjustment layer, take it up and then create a black mask. Similarly for burning, do the opposite, take it down. Now, create some checklists which will make it easier for you to dodge and burn. In this case, I simply created a solid color adjustment layer and changed the blend mode to color so that it takes away all the colors and then added a curves adjustment layer, increased the contrast so that I could see the unevenness a little better. 
and then you can just do dodging and burning. Now, do not get confused by those tiny little fine textures in the skin. We can apply some blur to it. All we have to do is to create a stamp visible layer at the top of the blemish and just add a little bit of Gaussian blur. And that's just for reference, which we called here reference blur. And after that, you can fix the lips, maybe fix the color using the color blend mode. And that's pretty much it. The possibilities are limitless. And the things you can do after this, we already have a ton of videos on that. You can check them out. The links are in the description. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.